still use this at work and I used to write this down before every single exam. Okay, so we have your debit and underneath your debit we have your assets, your drawings and your expenses. And underneath your credit we have your income, liability and your equity. Okay, so this means that your assets, your drawings and your expenses, when they get more, it's always on the debit side and your income, liability and equity when it gets more it's always on the credit side so this is the natural order in which they always behave in and if they behave in the opposite order your assets your drawings and your expenses if they become less we will do the opposite and we will take them to the credit side okay and your income liability and your equity if they do the opposite we will take them to their debit side okay but for now let's just memorize this formula so you can write it in this way you can write it in daddy kyle daddy kyle for you to remember it so your daddy stands for your debit your a stands for your asset your d stands for your drawings and your e your expense your c credit i income a liability and e your equity so if you get confused on which one is your expense and which one is your equity you can just remember that okay daddy Kyle so expense is always after your daddy because daddy pays the bills just for you just to make it more simply simplify just to simplify it okay so before we get to the questions i have prepared some questions let's take it to the double entry system so this is the accounting rule your double entry system so what the double entry system says is that every single transaction will always have two accounts always 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 so let's just see how that looks like okay received cash from rent income two accounts involved first one is your cash and your second one is your rent income so according to what we already memorized we said that underneath your debit we have your assets your drawings and your expenses and underneath your credit we have your income liability and your equity so cash is an asset and we are going to debit your cash okay because that's the formula then we have rent income it's an income it's an income and we have to credit that so our first account or the first transaction we will record is in your cash account Let's write that over there. Your cash account and your rent income account. So when we record this, let's say this transaction was made on the 1st of May. So your cash, we will record it, okay? The date, we'll say the 1st of May. And this was for rent income. We received cash for rent income. And the amount, let me write everything. Rent income. And the amount was $750. Then, in your rent income account, we received cash on the, 5th of, the 1st of May. We received cash and the amount is $750. So, we see the rent income, we had to credit it. And your cash account, we debited it, okay? Meaning, your debits and your credits are equal, okay? They are equal. So we are done with that. Let's get to another explanation. Another question for me to explain this. Paid expenses cash. What are the two accounts over here? What are the two accounts? So double entry system, meaning that we have two accounts. Every transaction has two accounts. So here we have your expense account and we have your cash account. So this expense can be anything. Electricity, it can be you're paying your rent, it can be your water bill, so it can be anything. So you paid your expense in cash, 8200 So let's take your first account will be your expense account 
And your second account will be your cash account. So let us record it. So we said your expenses under your debit side and your cash is also under your debit side because your cash is an asset. So now we cannot have two debits. So if we go back to what we explained first, if they do the opposite of what they're meant to do, we will also do the opposite. So remember your assets, drawings, and your expenses will increase on the debit side always. But ha what happened was when we paid cash, we did not get more money in the bank. We got less money in the bank because we took out money from our account. So instead of debiting it, we are going to credit it. So we'll do the opposite because it did the opposite. Okay, so your expense still remains here because we paid more expenses. So what we're going to do for our expense, it will still be on the debit. So we will say on the 2nd of May, we paid our expense cash of $8,200. And with our cash, money left our account. So usually we always record our asset on your debit. Remember cash is an asset. But now money left our account. We will do the opposite of what it did to us. So we will credit it. So we will say on the 2nd of May. We paid our expense. 8200 So now our debit is equal to our credit let's move on to the last last example we have received loan from the bank one thousand two hundred dollars two accounts here we have our loan account and we have our bank account so we received a loan from the bank one thousand two hundred so a loan what is a loan we need to pay back meaning this is a liability. What is our bank? Our bank is an asset. So the first account we will deal with is, let's give this, this will be the loan account. This will be our bank account. Now let's start recording. We received a loan. So meaning we have more liabilities. We have more people to pay off. Can you imagine more debt? So, it's doing what it's supposed to do, more debt. So, we have to credit this, okay? And in your asset, we got a loan, so they gave us the money, meaning we have more money in our bank account, so we will just debit it. So, it's behaving the way it's supposed to behave in accounting terms. So, what we'll do with the loan account is we received... The, our liabilities increased. They got more. So this was on the 3rd of June. It, I'm just making up a date. But on the 3rd of June, we received a loan through the bank of $1,200. And in the bank, we received money into our bank. Money was deposited into our bank for a loan of $1,200. So our debit here will be equal to our credit. Okay. So let's go back to the formula. Debit, we have our assets, we have our drawings, and we have our expense. Then your credit, we have your income, liability, and your equity. Let me just erase this for the final explanation. The natural way assets, drawings, and expense act, they always increase. And when they become more, when we acquire more, when we do more of these three, they will always be recorded on your debit side. And if we receive more income, we get more debt, more liability, and we get more equity, it will always 
get more or will be recorded on the credit side. But if we are our assets drawings in our expense decrease, we are selling more assets. We are getting more drawings, okay? They will always do the opposite and then we will have to record them on the credit side. So income, liability, equity. If we pay off our debt instead of getting more debt, we will have to do the opposite and we'll have to debit, okay? So just have this in mind. Write this down before every exam, before every test. I still write this and I'm at work. This is your formula. Memorize it, get to know it, get familiar with it. Remember you can do this. You are intelligent. If others can excel in accounting, so can you. Please subscribe and like this video and hold on for more videos to come. Thank you.